In the following lecture, we're going to discuss the nucleophilic substitution reaction mechanism. We're going to discuss the mechanism and we're going to deal with primary halogenoalkanes and we will be talking about the SN2 mechanism. So I'm going to uh, uh, explain to you in detail. The first thing that you need to know is that uh, we need to define what is a primary halogenoalkane. So a primary halogenoalkane is a halogenoalkane. Uh, remember, uh, in a halogenoalkane, there's a carbon chain and one of the carbon atom is bonded to a halogen. And let's pick Cl. Halogen is from group 7. So let's pick chlorine. Now, a carbon atom is uh, usually making four bonds. So in a primary halogenoalkane, what happens is that this carbon atom, this carbon atom which is bonded to the halogen, on two sides there would be hydrogens and on the third side there is going to be a carbon chain or the rest of the molecule. Let's uh, represent that by R. So in a primary halogenoalkane, the carbon on which the halogen is bonded it should be bonded to two hydrogen atoms and on one side uh, there should be the rest of the molecule. It could be a hydrogen as well, it could be anything actually. Uh, but at least on two sides there should be two hydrogens present. So I'm going to do a few examples. So let's uh, pick, pick chloroethane. Chloroethane, if you look at chloroethane, there's a Cl. There's a hydrogen over here and there's a CH3 over here. Now if you, if you look at this particular molecule so th this is where the chlorine is attached and it's attached to this carbon atom so you just you you would what you would do is you're going to focus on this carbon atom over here and if you focus on this carbon atom over here you would notice that on one side there's hydrogen on the other side there's another hydrogen so there are two hydrogens so this is a primary halogenoalkane chlorine is attached to a carbon atom that is attached on two sides it's it's, uh, it's bonded to hydrogen and on one side there's the rest of the molecule which has all these carbon and hydrogen atoms so so always focus on this high on this carbon atom over here and we're going to do a few more examples so let's look at this slightly more complicated molecule it has a carboxylic acid functional group as well so uh, it has these branched carbon atoms uh, now look for the carbon atom that is attached to a halogen uh, this Cl is attached to this particular carbon atom so let's just focus on that particular carbon atom and I'm going to circle it so putting a circle around this and now try and analyze this carbon atom. It's also referred to as sometimes as the alpha carbon atom on which the functional group is attached. So the Cl is attached to this particular carbon atom. And if you look closely, it's bonded to two hydrogens. On one side there's a hydrogen, on the other side there's a hydrogen. And on the third side, this is where the rest of the molecule connects with this particular carbon atom. So there are two hydrogens attached to this carbon atom. So this is also considered to be a primary halogenoalkane. And here is another example and this example, I'm doing this example to show you what is not a primary halogenoalkane. So if you look at this molecule over here, it has multiple functional groups, but there's a chlorine attached and it's attached to this carbon atom over here. So if you look at this carbon atom and if you try and analyze this carbon atom, you would notice that this carbon atom over here is not attached to two hydrogens. On one side there's a carbon chain, on the other side there's another carbon atom chain, ca carbon chain. There's only one hydrogen that's actually attached to this carbon atom. So this one, this over here is not, it's not primary. So always be careful that you would, that you should be able to identify what is a primary halogenoalkane. So any molecule that has a Cl attached to a carbon atom and the carbon atom is attached to two hydrogen atoms that would be called or considered a primary halogenoalkane. So now we're going to discuss, we've first uh, been able to identify what is a primary halogenoalkane. Now we're going to talk about the reaction mechanism and we're talking about the nucleophilic substitution reaction of halogenoalkane. So I've drawn a primary halogenoalkane over here, carbon bonded to two hydrogens and one Cl. And on the, on the left hand side, there's uh, the rest of the molecule. Now the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the CCl bond over here. This uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction involves this particular bond over here. And uh, you probably know that carbon and hydrogen bonds and uh, carbon-carbon bonds are mostly non-polar or they are almost non-polar. So, so they don't show any polarity but when you have a Cl atom attached, it's uh, extremely electronegative. So what the Cl atom would do is that uh, these electrons, these shared pair of electrons are going to be lying closer to Cl and if they are lying closer to Cl 
so if the if these shared pair of electrons are lying closer to cl cl has a slight negative charge whereas this carbon over here has a slight positive charge so this bond is has some polarity and there's a there's a uh, the first thing is that a permanent dipole is formed uh, the electrons are closer to cl cl has a slight negative charge and carbon has a slight positive charge now what this positive charge would do is that it would attract nucleophiles study three nucleophiles one was an oh ion oh with a charge of minus 1 uh and we also discussed two more nucleophiles uh, i'm going to pick uh, oh minus 1 i'm going to show the mechanism with oh minus 1 first uh the other two nucleophiles were nh3 nh3 had lone pairs on nitrogen which would be attracted to positive charges we also talked about the cn nucleophile cn cyanide nucleophile that also had uh, had a negative charge and it would also be attracted to this positive carbon over here so let's uh, first stick with oh minus 1 remember these two are, have exactly the same mechanism so the the oh minus 1 nucleophile plus oxygen has these lone pairs on it in this molecule so what happens is that uh, the electrons on oxygen are going to be attracted to this positive charge over here so these oh ions this hydroxide ion would be attracted to this positive charge and it's going to bring its electrons closer to this carbon it's going to try and bond with it and what would eventually happen is that as these lone pairs they get attracted to this positive carbon atom the lone pairs in this bond they are going to get repelled so as oh minus 1 brings its lone pairs closer to this carbon atom the lone pairs over here are going to be pushed closer to they're going to get repelled by the lone pairs coming from the hydroxide and these lone pairs over here are going to get pushed further and further away towards cl so what will eventually happen is that an intermediate or a transition state is going to be formed where so let me show you that uh, transition state there's a ch3 over here and let's draw all the other bonds in green so the electrons in cl they would get further and further away whereas this oh would be would be bringing its electrons closer and closer to this carbon atom so the, this oh minus 1 is bringing its electrons closer to this carbon atom whereas the electrons over here they're going to get uh, they're going to get repelled further and further away so eventually a time comes where this carbon atom the, it, and this is the transition state eventually a time comes where this carbon atom is making five bonds the three bonds the three old bonds plus one bond is actually in the process of being broken because the lone pairs are getting are being repelled so they are being pushed further and further away towards cl plus uh, another reason why these electrons are getting closer to cl is because cl is attracting electrons it's very electronegative so so due to the additional push by the electrons in on oh minus 1 uh a further repulsion occurs this entire transition state is going to have a negative charge because uh a negatively charged oh minus 1 is coming and it's getting attracted to it so this entire transition state will have a negative charge and in the next step what happens is that uh, the electrons they get pushed towards cl and cl minus 1 ion breaks apart and this oh goes and bonds with this carbon atom so let's let's draw the final uh, molecule it's going to be ch3 then you have c with two hydrogens and uh, let's uh, keep things the way it is this uh, oh goes and bonds with this carbon atom over here and the cl breaks apart it takes away the electrons with it and cl minus 1 is formed now obviously you can uh, uh, rewrite this molecule in a better way because uh, the oh is in a way basically just uh, replacing the cl so instead of drawing it like this uh, uh, what i can do is i can uh, i can draw it in the correct manner which is that the oh takes the position of the cl ions so let me go through the mechanism one more time which is that this carbon has a slight positive charge so it attracts this nucleophile oh minus 1 nucleophile and oh minus 1 with its electrons these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen 
it is attracted by this positive charge so it starts bringing its electrons and tries to bond with this carbon atom and as it brings its electrons the electrons in this bond over here they get repelled and the reason why they get repelled is uh, because Cl is very electronegative so Cl wants to attract these electrons it's strongly attracting these electrons and because of the extra repulsion coming from the electrons over here Cl is able to slowly pull these electrons towards itself whereas OH is slowly bringing its electrons and trying to bond with this carbon atom so so a transition state is formed and in this transition state carbon is making five bonds instead of four bonds and in the very and obviously this is a very unstable transition state so in the very next step Cl is able to successfully take away its electrons and Cl minus one is formed and OH is able to successfully bond with this carbon atom in its place so OH takes the position of Cl and a nucleophilic substitution reaction occurs. Another thing that needs to be known about this reaction mechanism is that it is a one step reaction although I've drawn two steps but this thing over here is a transition state which what means what that means is that uh, this is just a transition state when this molecule is getting converted into this molecule when OH ions are slight are getting attracted to this positive carbon and Cl-1 are slowly leaving this positive carbon so this transition state is formed for a very momentary instant so this is not an intermediate it's a transition state and this entire thing this entire step is just one step so remember this that it is it is a one step reaction and this is not an intermediate it's a transition state when this molecule is slowly transitioning into this molecule then uh, in the middle uh, for a very tiny momentary instant this thing would be formed but this is very unstable and at the very, at the very next moment this Cl would break off and this OH would come and take its place and this molecule of uh, an alcohol would be formed. So I'm now going to relate uh, the same mechanism and uh, show it uh, on an energy or reaction pathway diagram. So here are my reactants. Uh, there's a halogenoalkane, a primary halogenoalkane, and the OH nucleophile is the is the reactant. And this is the transition state where the OH approaches the carbon positive carbon, whereas the Cl is uh, the electrons of Cl get repelled, and this transition state is formed. So this is the activated complex or it is the transition state and uh, then your products are formed the seal breaks away and you get your product so i've i've drawn the same reaction uh, on on an on a reaction pathway diagram the other important point is that why is this reaction called an sn2 mechanism so what what is the meaning of this term sn2 now this S stands for substitution because it's a substitution reaction where a Cl gets substituted by an OH nucleophile. Uh, so it's a substitution. N stands for nucleophilic because this is a nucleophile. So SN stands for nucleophilic substitution. And why is there 2 over there? Now this 2 represents, if you look at this reaction mechanism, this is a one-step reaction mechanism. Now what this 2 means is that the rate of the reaction depends on it depends on both reactants. One of them is a halogenoalkane, so RCl, where R is a carbon chain, and uh, in this particular case, it's a primary halogenoalkane. And uh, the other thing is the OH nucleophile. So I have two reactants. One is a halogenoalkane, and the other one, so this is the halogenoalkane, and the other one is a nucleophile. Now, the rate of this reaction depends on the concentration of the Halogenoalkane, it also depends on the concentration of the OH nucleophile. If I increase the concentration of this reactant, my rate of reaction would increase. If I increase the concentration of my nucleophile, the rate of this reaction would increase. So my rate of, rate of reaction depends on the concentration of both reactants. So there are two reactants. So this two over here represents this information. It represents that the rate depends on both of the reactants that are involved in this reaction. And one other thing is that we've only uh, discussed the nucleophilic substitution using the OH-1 nucleophile. Remember, there are two other nucleophiles that have exactly the same reaction, CN-1 and NH3. So I'm going to show you uh, uh, the nucleophilic substitution reaction with CN-1 
everything all the reaction mechanism would be exactly the same as OH minus one so the only thing that I did was I replaced the OH with the CN minus one nucleophile so now uh, the reaction mechanism is exactly the same instead of OH I have CN CN cyanide ions are uh, the electrons or uh, in the CN minus one they get attracted to this positive carbon atom and the electrons in this bond over here they would slowly get repelled as these electrons come closer these electrons are going to get repelled so CN would be approaching this carbon atom CL would be leaving this carbon atom due to repulsion and eventually uh, this CL is knocked out and CL minus uh, one is formed this ion is formed and in its position CN uh, has gone and bonded with it so it's exactly the same mechanism and the same thing uh, if I have the NST nucleophile, uh, the mechanism would almost be exactly the same. So I'm, I'm just going to substitute the, these CN ions with the uh, ammonia molecules, uh, these ammonia nucleophiles. So I've replaced uh, the cyanide ions with uh, ammonia uh, nucleophiles. Uh, the reaction mechanism is pretty much the same. The lone pairs on nitrogen, they get attracted to this positive carbon atom and the electrons in the bond, they get repelled. And eventually this bond would get repelled and Cl minus one. So in this next step in this transition state, ammonia would be approaching and bo in and its bond with carbon would be strengthening, whereas Cl would take away these electrons and uh, would be repelled. One thing that's would that would be slightly different is that there is not going to be any minus one charge on this transition state because ammonia is a neutral molecule, unlike OH minus one and Cn minus one they were negatively charged ions so when negative charged ions went and joined with this carbon atom the whole transition state got a negative charge but since ammonia is neutral this molecule away is also neutral so the transition state that is formed is also going to be it's also going to be neutral and uh, so there wouldn't be any positive charge over here and in the next step uh, this seal breaks off and it leaves with electrons so Cl minus one is formed this NH3 goes and joins with this carbon atom over here and replaces it. But this ion now is going to have a positive charge because Cl took away extra electrons when it was uh, it was being repelled because one of the electrons belonged to this carbon atom. So uh, Cl took away one of the electrons and became Cl minus one. Hence, uh, this molecule over here is going to have a positive charge. And um, this is an ethyl ammonium ion. What could further happen to this ethyl ammonium ion is that it could lose uh, the electrons. Uh, it can lose its H plus one ion. And when it loses its H plus one ion, then those H plus one ions can go and bond with the Cl to form HCl. And you would be left with the uh, ethyl amine C, two hydrogens over here. And uh, one of the hydrogen, one of the extra bonds that it's making, uh, that hydrogen could lose the electrons and go and bond with the HCl. So there, there would be a reversible reaction over here, a reversible reaction between uh, where ethylamine, where ethylamine, because it's a base, would be reacting with HCl, that's an acid, or vice versa, ethyl ammonium ions that are formed might be losing the H plus one back to Cl minus one to form HCl, and an ethyl amine would be formed. So, so remember, in the case of this, uh, the ethyl ammonium ion would be would be uh, f uh, having a reversible reaction. It would be this reversible reaction. So you would get ethyl ammonium ions. You would also be getting ethyl amine as a product as well when the nucleophile is ammonia in the nucleophilic substitution reaction with ammonia.